Let's look at example 8. Sometimes these are tricky until you get used to them. We're still factoring out a common factor here. Notice there are two terms. You could think of this as two terms. This added to that. And you can see that each term has an a plus 3 in it. So I can factor out the a plus 3. So I could have x times a plus 3 plus 4 times a plus 3. And that can be written as x plus 4 times a plus 3. And that's it. That's the answer. If you don't see that, or if that's not clear, try thinking about it like this. I could have x times y plus 4 times y, and I deliberately have an x here just like I have there, and a 4 here just like I have there to illustrate this concept. Well, I have x times y plus 4 times y. Each of these clearly has a y factor, so I could factor out the y. And I'm going to write it like this, x plus 4 times y. I've factored the y out on the right, and that's okay. I could still multiply these two things together to give me my original expression. And you could see it's distributing the y here from the right side. y times the x gives me my xy. And then I have plus. And then y times the 4 gives me my 4y. So this right here, this should make sense to you. xy plus 4y equals x plus 4 times y. This problem is the same thing. Just instead of x times y and 4 times y, we have x times a plus 3 and 4 times a plus 3. So instead of the y getting factored out here on the right, the a plus 3 got factored out there. So x times a plus 3 plus 4 times a plus 3 gives us x plus 4 times a plus 3. The, a very similar approach is uh, taken with number 9. We have a times b minus 5 minus 7 times b minus 5. So in other words, you can think of it as a times this minus 7 times this. So the this, the b minus 5, is the same in both terms. And that is what can be factored out. So a times that thing minus 7 times that thing can be factored as a minus 7 times that thing. a minus 7 times b minus 5, and that's our answer.